What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to this week's episode of P&Q. Now if you're new to this series, and many of you are, then this is my question and answer series where you get to ask me questions or just put comments to me, uh, something I can, I can comment or talk on, and then I respond to that the following week. Now I record these typically on a Friday, uh, sometimes the day will change, maybe you'll do it on a Thursday or a Saturday, uh, but they will always be uploaded for Mondays. So I'll, I'll typically uh, record on Friday and upload it and schedule it to come out to you on Monday. So you start your week with this, okay? So for me here, it is now Friday, and for you, if you're seeing this on the day one, it's the Monday. So that's how it works. Now, four ways you can do this. Uh, one, you probably comment a question down below in that comment section, which is, you know, a fairly common way after all. Two, you can email me directly at miniwarzone at gmail.com. This is not so common, doesn't get used very often, but you will get an, an, an uh, I can never say this, an anonymous response. That's because I'm trying to talk too quickly. If you do that, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, three, if you make a video yourself and you ask a question in said video, then I will pick that up if I see it, obviously. And I think, oh, that's a good question, and, and I can answer it. And on here, then I will do that as well. Okay, or the fourth way, of course, you may meet me in person and put a comment to me or ask me something, and then if I remember, I think, oh yeah, if I remember, I'll answer that or talk about it on P&Q. It has happened. Anyway, that's the pre-ramble over. Now I've got two video questions, as I like to call them, no emails, and then the comments from last week, and that's it. So we'll start with the video questions because it's easier to print them out that way. And the first one comes from Kuja and Kiwi from Kuja's Hobby Sunday. It says, um, what are your thoughts on the Reavers for 40k and the new box sets called First Strike and No No Fear? Uh, right, these are the ones they these are the ones that come with uh, a gaming mats and you can turn the box into scenery or something like that. If I, I haven't looked into it too much, but I think that's a great idea. Uh, especially which one is there's one of them for 25 pounds isn't there? it's like a real real skirmish thing just to get you up and running with the rules is that first strike or no no fear I, I don't know but whichever one it is that's, that's that's a cracking way to get um you know youngsters into the hobby i i feel personally um you know if i if i, I had a you know a child who was just coming up to i don't know i don't know what a typical age is to show an interest in that sort of thing seven eight nine i don't know and I said, you know, Dad, you know, and I get into this hobby rather than buy them like a the big box set uh, for Warhammer. I'd get them one of those now, that's, which is brilliant. So I think they're great. What do I think about the new Reavers? Um, well, obviously, I I can't comment on any Tactica because they when they just came out, and it still amazes me how people want you to have some sort of tactical wisdom and awesome, amazing knowledge about that. that when they've only just come out, and that's not possible. Haven't got any myself, but I do like the look of them, so probably I will end up getting some, just because I like the look of them, and I want to paint those those funky looking masks that they got, they're quite scary. I, I like that. See if I can do a decent job on it. So yeah, I like the look of them. I will be getting some, for sure. Uh, just on a side note, I know it's got nothing to do with P&Q, but uh, I picked myself up some uh, Bulgrin, Ogrin, sort of things, because I want them for my Astra Militarum faction. So I'll be doing those at some point. Uh, so yeah, but thank you for your question. That's a great question. The next video question, or the, the last video question, because there's only two this week, so it's a bit quiet on the video question front. Either you haven't been making them or you're forgetting to put them out there or you just can't be bothered, that, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I do them when I find them. Uh, anyway, the last video question comes from Green Stuff Games. Uh, on a series called VQ&A. Uh, now, there's a practical question here. Uh, it says, my thoughts on the VQ&A changing to just a Q&A, where people can leave comments uh, slash questions below the video, etc. Uh, that's one, this is like two questions, so that's one part of it. Now, what do I think about that? I think probably, because uh, you've stated you don't really want to do long videos, uh, VQ&As are kind of, this whole video question thing, I think it's a, f correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a fairly new thing where you ask a question on a video. I've 
been doing it for a little while but not that long it's only been this year I've picked it up and started doing it so I think you'd probably be okay with going to other questions as well I mean what you could do you could do something like mini wargaming where you just set yourself a time limit and say oh, look, I'll answer as many questions as I can within this time limit and just randomly pick questions you could do that that's what I would say because they go for about I don't know 30 40 minutes whatever it is and then they just answer enough questions until they filled their time slot and then they move on to their um is it the vault one then I think so, so you could do that though you could set yourself a five ten minute limit or whatever you want to set it at and say right I'm going to answer questions for the next five minutes say um sorry if I don't get to your question and you can always get to it the following week or something like that or if you have because some weeks you have a real dry week and it's there's nothing really there and you're struggling to to pad out your video as it were oh, sorry I'm just looking at the the light coming in from the the door there it's, it looks kind of funny on my camera that's all <laughs> it's just a camera thing but anyway yes yeah, so that's what I would suggest second part of the question was do you have a particular color or particular scheme that you like using in your painting no I like them all I like all color schemes I like all colors equally pretty much although I I suppose if I had to ultimately choose I'd have obvious I'd, I'd have the um, looking at my ultramarines I do like I like a blue color scheme I gotta say it I think they just get it but only just blue color scheme above all the others that's just for me personally thank you for your question that's a great question so that puts me on to the comments or questions that were left from last week and we're doing okay for time we're on seven minutes there um first one comes from jamjar 34 this isn't chronologically first just the first at the top of the list so it's a great one pete how do you get inspiration for this hobby and what is your favorite color this uh, uh to paint with keep up the good work I, well, I don't, like I say, I don't really have a favourite colour to paint with. I suppose you'd say it's more of a favourite makes. I have favoured makes, and depending on what I'm using them for. Um, so for airbrushing, I suppose my favourite make is Minotaur, uh, which is, I think it's Badger's own um, make of paints for their Badger airbrushes, I think. Or if not, then it's specifically designed for them. And the reason I like them for airbrushing is because they're so easy to, they rarely clog up at all. And they're just so easy to clean, clean through, even just do a quick, a quick changeover clean. They're just so easy. Um, Vallejo's okay, or Vallejo, or however you pronounce it, if you're Spanish. Vallejo, I don't know, I'm not Spanish, so, yeah, so um, they're okay for um, airbrushing. Um, good, not quite as good as Minotaur, but still good. Uh, the GW paints, I think, are better for hand brushing. Although I do like P3 paints. I like some of their brighter colors, and you can use them in airbrushes quite easily because you don't have to fill them down that much they're quite thin anyway the viscosity of the p3 paints is such that you can do that um and that's about it so colors i don't really have a favorite color to paint with i suppose a color i, that I least like is white to paint because they often get a, get a chalky finish and you have to apply many coats to cover the uh, the undercoat whatever it may be so but other than that, you know, but I do like to see a nice white army on the battlefield. I don't get to see them very often, but I have seen them and they look really cool. Thank you for your question. By the way, I'm going to take a sip of my willow bark tea. If you can hear a fan, by the way, that's because I've got a fan on me because it's quite hot today, quite warm. Hmm. So we're on to Drake's War Channel next. Who says... Well, this is a strange one. I would like to ask you if you could say, I saw a horror over the water in my mirror. 
in an American accent. Lol. Please. Oh, I don't know. Is there some significance to that particular saying? In, in, in quotations, I saw a horror over the water in my mirror. Okay, I, I don't know. Um, I saw a horror over the water in my mirror. I saw a horror over the water in my mirror. I don't know that kind of a general American accent because you, you're a, you're a large place and you have many different accents. Is that all right? I don't know. <laughs> but what is the significance of that? I saw a horror over the water in my mirror. Is that a quote from a film or a movie or something? Anybody? Hmm. I don't know. Jedi Jim 252 says worst thing about the hobby the cost to get all the cool stuff you want yeah yeah I agree with that best thing about the hobby is there's loads of cool stuff every time you turn around to buy <laughs> so yeah I'm with you there loads of cool stuff hey at least we never get bored right <laughs> all right Eric beer 40k is next says nice vid did I not leave a comment last week? Do you have any plans on how you will celebrate 1k subscribers? Maybe some twerking? And we, I, I said no, I did reply to Nick saying no comment. I did double check. And he said that must have been because he watched on his phone. That's okay, I mean, how you are able to keep up with all the content that you do amazes me. Uh, I struggle sometimes, I find it very difficult, but you know, I mean, I have to play catch up, so I just don't know how you do it. I think um, I think James from the channel James and his stuff once said to you, "Are there two of you?" And I and I am with him on this train of thought. Have you managed to clone yourself, perhaps many times over? And you're all watching and commenting. How do you do it? How do you do it? <laughs> but that's okay. How am I? How do I plan on to celebrate one K subscribers? Well, I'm a long way off yet. I know it doesn't seem like it to. Um, someone such as yourself but um, it's gonna take me I I probably won't see 1k till next year it's gonna take a while I think anyway please viewers prove me wrong share my video out there get help me get subscribers um, but how would I do it I don't know I'd have to do something I'd have to do something special wouldn't I for 1,000 subscribers I don't know what though I'd have to give that some thought. Hmm. Anyway, and I've got one more question, which is from Basic Miniature Painting, and it is simply, what got you into the hobby? Now, it's a great question. It's one I've had before a few times, but I don't mind getting questions I've had before. Um, I don't, once upon a time, I thought, should I do an FAQ series? But I thought, no, that's just silly. I don't mind answering questions I've answered before because the, the point is, um, I get new viewers all the time. I do get new viewers. I'm just going to turn this fan off for a moment. Hang on a minute. Oh, excuse me. There. It's starting to get a chill now on my neck. Um, I do get new subscribers, uh, or viewers rather, all the time. And if they come across this, they may wonder how I got into the hobby. And I'm happy to talk about it, um, provided you're happy to listen to it. Well, what got me into the hobby was actually, uh, some of you may know, or some of you do know, I know you do, because we've talked about it before. Um, I have MS, I have multiple sclerosis, but I wasn't diagnosed until about, oh, I don't know how long it's been, five years ago. And I used to work, and I'm gonna say it, I used to work for Royal Mail. I used to work for Royal Mail in, uh, administration department um, where we used to key in it's basically data entry and we used to have targets I was there 11 years um, but when I was diagnosed with MS they seem it seemed like they couldn't wait to kind of okay here's a nice package for you off you go have a good life that's it in a nutshell that is what they did. What are you thinking? What's this got to do with getting into the hobby? Well, I I had this condition then, which I I was a bit down about for a little while, not too long. 
I'll, 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 but I hold my hand up. I was a bit depressed about it for a little while. Then I kind of picked myself up and said, look, let's just get over this and, you know, let's focus on uh, something. What, what I need is a hobby. And I decided, coming from a lit literary background, uh, with a degree in English, literature, language and media stuff, I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a book. That's what I'm going to do. So I started writing this book, this novel. I still have it somewhere on my laptop. Um, and I was writing it. It was a supernatural book involving uh, supernatural creatures. And I came to a point where there was a, going to be a skirmish of some sort. And I thought, I tried drawing it out on paper. I'm thinking, that's not, yeah, it's not firing my imagination. I know, I'll make a diorama, like a little diorama of the whole scene. And get some figures, paint them up and look at it and think, right, what would happen? I can visualise it better then. And... To cut a long story short with the diorama, I did actually make it by the standards I have now. It's atrocious, but at the time I thought I, I didn't know anything about hobbying or what, whatever. Um, but at the time I thought it was a pretty damn good attempt. Anyway, to, in order to make this uh, little diorama, I wanted some trees. And you know, at the time, Games Workshop, it's still in the same place in my city centre. But it was the only shop of that sort in that street. There was another hobby shop, but it was way up the other end of town. Uh, anyway, I was just passing the window and I looked at these really cool models, and I've passed that shop time after time after time. You know, since I was a young boy, I looked at them with wonder, and going, "Ooh, look at those those models that cool!" But that game they're playing looks really complicated. Anyway, I was in town for a, I think it was um, an eye test, or my wife was in for an eye test, or we both were. Anyway, I had. A um, couple hours to kill, basically, and I was wandering around. I was waiting for my wife to do whatever it was she was doing. I can't remember now. And uh, I, what well, I suppose, I looked in the games workshop doorway. There was no one in there, so I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go in. I wonder if they got any trees. Uh, maybe I can buy some trees to make this diorama I want to make. Anyway, I went in, and um, the the guy in there he was very nice. He said, "Oh, you." Uh, you into the hobby? I was like, no, not really. He said, do you play? So you don't play at all? I said, no, I just like the look of the models. In fact, I'm looking for some trees like that there. I was pointing to their table. They had some of the, the Citadel, uh, those plastic trees, the, the free trees on a, like a, like a bit of scattered terrain. Um, I said, I want something. I'm looking for something like that. And they said, oh, just over here. Like, you know, if you, he said, you should just be, but you don't play. I said, no, I, j I just like the look of cool models, really. He said, well, do you want to have a game? I can run through it with you. It's, you know, it's not, not a problem. There's no one else here. And I don't know what it was. I thought, I just thought, wow, you know, I've got the time to kill. So I did. <clears throat> when we were playing the really Dark Vengeance uh, starter set, essentially. But the, of course, Games Workshop, so they had it, it was all painted up beautifully with lovely terrain and a nice table. And he's running through the rules with me. <clears throat> I took the part of the Dark Angels and uh, he took the part of the Chaos uh, Space Marines. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> and we played a game, which ultimately resulted in a draw. I can still remember that. Uh, and I don't know why, it's one of those times I can still remember. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I was just loving rolling the dice and I felt myself getting quite excited and um, full of energy when I was blowing stuff up and I, I I blew up his hell brute um, <clears throat> with a, the plasma guns from one of the the raven yeah not the raven guard is it the, the raven the raven wing sorry the the one the guys on the bikes anyway and I'm a, I can't remember dice rolls or anything like that it was years ago but um, it must have been like a decision I was trying to attack him because I didn't know it wouldn't the, the odds were not in my favour but he was saying oh, I wouldn't really do that if I was you I don't think you'll do well there doing that but I did I blew him up anyway and I was like yes I want this I want more of this I like this anyway needless to say and I came out of the shop with models and glues and paints and brushes and and this little voice in my head saying well, I'm going to have to explain this now <laughs> while well, I've got all this stuff um 
Oh, and a book. No, I went up to the other. I walked up to the other shop actually, and, and I bought a book. It was um, how to paint Citadel miniatures, which is a brilliant book for starting. Even now, it holds up today. It really is a good book for anyone starting out in the hobby because because the techniques are so simple to do, and it's got a little DVD in there as well. Well, I don't know. What, I don't know why I call it a little DVD. I mean, it's a disc is the same size as any other disc. They have a DVD with it, which is great. So you pause and rewind as many times as you want and it's just great and I was doing that I needed that just to build my first set of tactical marines because I was scared about messing it up and but it was easy enough I mean I could do it blindfold now but it was just that's what got me into the hobby that's how I started because then they told me well they told me I think they told me on the same day about check out YouTube and look for battle reports and you can pick up how the game works roughly from watching those and and that's how I got into that and YouTube and I just got really excited about it. I discovered Beasts of War and mini wargaming and I just wanted to be those guys. I wanted to be like them. So here we are. And that's pretty much it. Um, of course, seeing all the other wonderful YouTube channels out there and I think, you know, we can all take a little bit from each one and enrich our cooking part of what we do in our, as uh, Jamjar34 likes to say, his hobby kitchen. We've all, we've all got a, a metaphorical hobby kitchen of sorts, and I'm in mine now. It's actually my studio, which I had built purposely for the hobby. Um, I've spent a lot of money on this hobby, I have. Um, but, you know, I did get medically retired, so I had the means to do so at the time. So I thought, well, it's a once in a lifetime chance. It's not going to come around again. And that's what I did. That's how I got into this hobby. And that's why I'm still in this hobby. And I'm, I'm continually discovering new games and other areas of the hobby that I, for the most part, like. And there you go. I hope that's a, a comprehensive enough answer for you. Um, but that is all the questions I've got for this week. So it's probably just as well. I ended on that one, which went on for quite a bit, I know. But uh, um, yeah, so th this is it. So if you want to ask another question, either pop it down below, email me, or put it in a video of your own. Or if you live nearby or you see me at a convention or something, just come up, see me, uh, talk to me. I'm always happy to talk to people. So yeah, I can do that. Right, well, that's it for now. Hope you guys have a great week ahead. I really do. Um, I, I feel great lately. Um, not so much physically, but um, positivity-wise, I feel great. And, yeah, let's do our awesome hobby. Let's do some awesome hobby stuff. Um, all brushes lead to war. Remember that, because that's kind of my catchphrase. <laughs> I will see you on the next video. Bye for now, folks. Bye-bye. <laughs>